I often wondered about the difference in meaning between the words finished and complete or completely. The difference between the words finished and completely. And so I went to the fount of all knowledge, um, Mick Holding, who's the president of the chamber, and he is president because he knows everything about everything. And so I went to Mick and asked him, well, what's the difference between finished and completely? And he said to me, well, look at it this way. If, as a man, you find a good woman, she makes you complete. Can I have an amen if we were in church? And he says, if you find a woman who is totally wrong for you, then you're finished. Amen? Amen. And he says, but that's not all. If you find, if your woman, your wife, finds you with another woman, then you're completely finished. <laughs> I heard an amen from a woman. And he says, and lastly, if the woman you have chosen as your wife, her only recreation is the shopping mall, the car lot, the shopping mall, and the car lot, then you are finished completely. So now that we have defined those two words, we should be finished completely by 2.15. Finished completely by 2.15. And so now as, as lunch is served, I'm going to call President Mick Holding, who will come and deliver to you the official welcome and acknowledging, acknowledgements. Give him a round of applause as he comes. <laughs> and I've been instructed, Mick, Mick to, for you to come onto the podium from my left, your right. Good afternoon. I don't recall that conversation at all, just for the record. <clears throat> the Honorable K. Peter Turnquest, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Ms. Lindsay Plumley, Executive, Executive Officer of the U.S. Embassy, together with Mr. Hank Ferguson of the U.S. Embassy. Mr. Ian Rowell, Grand Bahama Port Authority President. <clears throat> Mr. Henry St. George, Grand Bahama Port Authority. Ms. And Dr. Ian Strawn of the University of the Bahamas. Officers and directors of the Grand Bahama Chamber of Commerce. Chamber members, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. And welcome to this Welcome to this, the seventh annual Business Excellence Award ceremony. <clears throat> this event was originally scheduled for a similar time last year, but Hurricane Matthew came along on the 6th of October and somewhat disrupted our plans. Also traditionally, the award ceremony has been held as an evening event, but this year we decided to try a lunchtime event and I have to say judging by the number of <coughs> excuse me judging by the number of people present today we made a good decision the purpose of the business excellence award ceremony is for the Chamber of Commerce to recognize those businesses and those business persons who have made an outstanding contribution to the business community and in turn, the whole community of Grand Bahama. This year, we received a total of 30, 37 nominations, 
for the six categories of awards. Obviously, in each category, there can only be one winner. But in my mind, everyone who has been nominated is a winner. It, their, their contribution has been recognized to the business community, and all nominees should be congratulated. Se Thank you. <clears throat> Senator the Honorable uh, Kwesi Thompson, Minister of State for Grand Bahama, shares that same opinion. He sends his apologies for not being able to be with us today, but he has asked me to pass on his congratulations to all of the nominees and the winners for upholding the standards of excellence in the business community. He also acknowledged the work of the Chamber of Commerce in providing a voice for and support to the business community. Before we proceed with the main uh, award ceremony, uh, a slight difference to what we have done in previous years, and in the spirit of my comments and Senator Thompson's comments about all nominees being a winner, I would ask you to join me in congratulating all of those nominees whilst they are presented with a certificate of their achievement. And I should be being joined by Mercy Ferguson too. Ah, here she comes. Okay. You're going to call out the names, Mercy. Thank you, Mr. President. If you'll take your place to my left. As I call your name, would you kindly come okay. to the front? Leonardo Farisi. Outstanding Business Person of the Year nominee. Cleveland Duncan, Outstanding Business Person of the Year. There it is. Lynn Lowe. Erica Gates. Larry Albury, Freeport Jack Wash. Robert Adams, Graham Thompson and Co. Clavon Duncombe, Fluid Factory. Those were the nominees for this year's Outstanding Business Person of the Year. In the category of Developing Entrepreneur, I'll give them a moment to get settled. Developing entrepreneur, Latess Bartlett. Latess is absent, but she has a representative here. And the person of Cheryl Bartlett. Otario Mitchell, Caribbean Pavement Solutions. Sean Johnson. Rodney Devermond. John Apple Construction. Keith Cooper. Jay Roll. And Kiera and Donna Jones from Keys Bahamas Realty. For the category of Company of the Year with employees 1 to 50, Switzer Bahamas Limited. Yes. 
Flying Fish Restaurant. Keen Eye Media Limited. Dolphin Cove Restaurant. Bethel's Bethel Books and Stationaries. Bahamas Orthodontic Center. And Fluid Factory. Those were the nominees for category A, one to 50 employees in the company of the year. In the category, larger category, with 51 plus employees, Company of the Year, Freeport Ship Services Limited. <laughs> Pharmachem Technologies Grand Bahama Limited. Grand Bahama Shipyard Limited. Western Air. and MSC Bahamas. Philanthropic Business or Business Person of the Year, Eddie Waugh, J.S. Johnson and Company Limited. Star General Insurance Company. Scotiabank Bahamas. Pelican Bay Hotel. Stat Oil, South Riding Point. Unexo. And Keys Bahamas Realty. Those are our nominees. Oh, we still have some coming. Pelican Bay. Oh, I failed to mention a category. Lifetime Achievement Awards. Lifetime Achievement Awards. The nominees are Jeffrey Butler, Post Humus. Is anybody here for Jeffrey Butler? Frederick Smith QC. Frederick Smith, and Ricky Rowe from Ocean Motion. Okay, Fred just got a little shorter. <laughs> Thank you, Carrie.
Ladies and gentlemen, those are our nominees for the 2017 year. Thank you so much and good luck to whomever will be the winner. We wish you all luck, but we want to say that you're all winners today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mercent and, and Mick. We join you in congratulating all the nominees. And as a matter of fact, I feel that any business whose doors are still open in the current economic climate in Grand Bahama is a winner, don't you think? You deserve an award for business excellence. And so, as we come here this afternoon to recognize these notable businesses, we have a history, uh, this is the seventh annual award ceremony, and so I want to find out whether there are any past awards um, honorees um, in the audience today. If you are here, just stand. If you received the Business Excellence Awards in the past, just stand for us. Anyone? All right, here they are. Give them a round of applause. Excellent, excellent. It's good to see the tradition of business excellence continuing. We are very happy to have with us today Ms. Lindsay Plumley, who is the economic officer at the U.S. Embassy in Nassau. And she is now going to come and to share with us how we can make Grand Bahama great again. Good afternoon. Deputy Prime Minister Turnquest, President Mick, Board of Directors, nominees, friends, and business leaders. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me today. I can't tell you enough how happy I am to be here. As a U.S. Foreign Service officer, a U.S. diplomat, I have served in many places throughout the world, most recently in Baghdad, Iraq. So you can imagine how pleased I am that I get to call the Bahamas home. Interestingly, yes, that's worth a, a, an applause, right? Interestingly, um, I've also become very popular with family and friends who've all decided that they're going to come visit me. I'd like to think it's because I'm terribly charming, uh, but I think it's more because now I get to live in paradise. So thank you for uh, wel welcoming me to uh, my new home. Uh, this is not my first trip to Grand Bahama. In fact, I was here many years ago when I was in college, or just after college. I won't say how many years ago that was, but I'm particularly happy to return. I look forward to many additional trips as well. To support where I can your efforts to rebuild and revitalize the economy, and of course, enjoy more of its natural beauty. What was true many years ago when I first visited Grand Bahama remains true today. In addition to being a beautiful island blessed with enviable climate most of the time, the last two days notwithstanding, and despite uh, current cold temperatures, it's located just off of Florida and centered on major shipping routes. Freeport has many of the attributes to be a major commercial hub in the Western Hemisphere. It has one of the largest, most sophisticated deep water ports in the region and first-class infrastructure, and while I'm with you, I intend to visit some of the world-class companies that are based here. During this trip, I will meet with local businesses like Buckeye Partners, Pharmachem, Polymers International, Radford Marine, and the Grand Bahama Shipyard, as well as some smaller businesses to learn their perspective on the ease of doing business here. I suspect everyone will have a few stories to tell me. While well, I just arrived in Freeport yesterday, the U.S. Embassy has long been actively involved in Freeport to support trade and investment between the Bahamas and the United States. In the energy sector, the Embassy continues to work with the government and the new leadership and Bahamas Power and Light to assist in the development of renewable energy solutions. Our objective is to support initiatives to provide affordable, sustainable energy to all Bahamians. Security is essential to the free float of trade, an issue of particular importance to the Freeport Container Port and to shipping companies that use the port. We have a long-standing partnership with the port and the government and such projects as the Container Security Initiative 
and mega ports, which together allow Freeport to boast that it has some of the best security in the Western Hemisphere. The Embassy is pleased to be part of discussions with members of the Chamber and some of the companies represented in this room to establish an American Chamber of Commerce. An AmCham would benefit any enterprise that conducts regular business with the United States. As a member of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, it would give the Bahamas a voice in Washington and here, as well as offer access to the chambers of every one of the 50 states. We believe that an AmCham could enhance the great work that the Grand Bahama Chamber of Commerce has been doing and assist in bringing new resources to the private sector on this island. We're currently providing private sector individuals a study tour, IVLP, uh, a, a tour of several cities in the United States. And we're happy that Charles Pratt from the Grand Bahama Port Authority was able to recently uh, go on one of these trips. There'll be other tours of this kind based on specific needs of your community. And we look forward to collaborating with you to make these opportunities a reality. So if you have a study tour idea, please let us know. I would again like to thank the Chamber of Commerce for its kind generosity in inviting me. And I look forward to an afternoon that celebrates the hard work of businesses in Freeport. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Plumley, for your timely address and assurances of support to, um, to local businesses. We want to begin our awards presentation. And before we do, we just want to do two things. One, we want to thank our selection committee, comprised of Dan Romance, Sarah Kirkby, and Mick Holding. And we want to especially thank the judges, who I'm sure had a most difficult task, um, H. Rudy Sawyer, Donald Glass, and Deanne Seymour. We want to, to especially highlight the fact that our judges are totally independent, and there have been no inducements, promise, given past, present, or future um, to skew these results. And so the selection process, as I said, I'm sure was a difficult one for them. But before we announce our First presentation, I'm going to call um, Andrea. We want to give away a door prize. And she's going to have someone select a ticket. And I have a lovely basket here, or bag, I should say, that says, Today I am alive. I'm sure the contents will be appreciated. Where's Andrea? Oh. oh, okay. Okay. I was looking right over your head. Yeah. Ticket number 38. Who's 38? 38? Can you raise your hands? I hear a scream. I'm um, Andrea. Can we have Ms. Denise Adley from Alive? Are you here? Ah, you can come and make this special presentation. We are so grateful that Alive has actually partnered with the Chamber. You are. Yeah, we are so grateful that Alive has partnered with the Chamber. Um, in order to make this event a successful one. You, you are the proud recipient today of a Samsung S7 device, compliments of the Corporate Solutions Department with the Live. And because we believe in BEST, we're not only giving her a phone today, we're giving you a free month of service, unlimited. Wow. Congratulations. Okay, at this time, Denise is going to further enlighten us about the various prizes that Alive has.
has available today. Um, again, we're so happy to be this year's proud sponsors um, for the Business Excellence Awards. We are happily donating each recipient with a 4G LTE wireless MiFi hotspot device, compliments of us, and along with the device, we are also giving you an unlimited plan. So each of the seven categories, each recipient will receive that compliments of Alive. And, you know, we, we're just so happy to be here. We're happy to be this year's sponsors. And um, we congratulate all the winners in advance. And if you need any assistance with your devices, you know where to reach us. And we're happy to be Alive. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for your support. Our first award is going to be the Developing Entrepreneur of the Year Award. And this award is given to recognize the entrepreneur who has started a new business in the private sector within the past five years. The business must have at least one full year of existence but less than five years of operation. And so coming to present this award will be uh, Jeremy Caffarata, who is the director and chairman of the Industry and Economic Development Committee of the Chamber. And he will also be accompanied by Eric Russell, who is also the director and chairman of the Public Relations Committee. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Lawrence read most of uh, what I was to read, but I'll read it again anyway. Sorry. <laughs> uh, the award for Entrepreneur of the Year is given to recognize the entrepreneur that has started a new business in the private sector within the past five years. The business must have been in operation for at least one full year, but less than five years of operation by June. This year's nominees are Latesse Bartlett, Chocolates Island Delights, Aterio Mitchell, Caribbean Pavement Solutions Limited, Sean Johnson, Move 242 Culinary Fusion, Rodney Davamand, John Aptal Construction, Keith Cooper, West End Ecology, Ecology Tours, J. Roll, Liberty, Kiara and Donna Jones, Keys, Real, Keys Bahamas Realty. Congratulations to all the nominees. And the award for Entrepreneur of the Year goes to Mr. J. Roll of Liberty Vegetarian Takeout and Juice Bar. Congratulations to Jay. <laughs> Congratulations to Jay. And uh, that's why I have my alkaline special shake every morning. That had no part in the decision, folks. We are now going to call for the next award the Philanthropic Business or Person of the Year Award. Even in these economic times, people are still giving money away. And so we're going to recognize them today, and we're calling Greg LaRoda, Director of the Chamber, accompanied by Mrs. Lips, Leslie Baptista, and they are going to present this award. Good afternoon, everyone. It's wonderful to see you all here. 
um, and we are presenting for the Philanthropic Business of the Year. Yes, the Philanthropic Business or Business Person of the Year Award is being awarded to the company or person that contributes through their business to charitable organizations or community groups. Please help me recognize our, nomine our nominees who give generously to our community. Eddie Juan Jr. J.S. Johnson and Company Limited. Star General Insurance Company. Scotia Bank Bahamas. Pelican Bay Hotel. South Riding Point. Unexo. And Keys Bahamas Limited. Thank you for your generosity. And the winner is. Those are still good. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Eddie Vaughan Jr. Is there a representat representative for Eddie Vaughan Jr. here? Okay, well we will thank uh, Eddie personally. And, uh, and we appreciate the opportunity to recognize his and, and others' contributions to our Grand Bahama community. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You got me for a little bit longer. So we're here, obviously, to celebrate excellence in business, and um, I would personally like to congratulate uh, all the nominees uh, for being recognized. But we don't just see excellence in business. There are so many organizations, charities, and church groups throughout our island that excel in what they do to make Grand Bahama a better place. It is in appreciation of this and in understanding that it takes the support of the business community to help them meet their mission that our Business Excellence Awards will now include a special humanitarian feature showcasing excellence in organizations and charities that do so much important work that excel in helping many in our community. And I'll tell you, the first humanitarian feature is a cause very near and dear to my heart, and uh, it's one which has provided a safe haven for over 4,000 children since they opened their doors almost 40 years ago. These are children who simply had no place else to go. So it is with great pleasure that we turn our first humanitarian feature focus on the Grand Bahama Children's Home. Please watch. Executive Director of the Grand Bahama Children's Home, Sheila Johnson Smith. At present, we have 25 children. We just went down to 25. We had 27. We typically have about 27 to 33, but we can accommodate about 40, 45. But of course, we can't at the moment because we just don't have the funding to do so. We get kids that are in, you know, infants up to 13, and when they um, get into their teens, they move out into a different arrangement. We have two buildings, where the, one where the toddlers and the babies are, and the other where the older children are. We take care of the Northern Bahamas. We have children from Bimini and Abaco. And so this home is needed. It's just heartbreaking at times. And our children have been molested sexually. They've been battered, they've been abused, they've been just abandoned. And these children 
they're resilient. Our average cost per year is about $450,000. Uh, and our government subsidies uh, are $97,500, and that's twice a year, January and July, for a total of $195,000. That sum, that $195,000, doesn't even really cover our salaries. So we have to raise over $250,000 a year through donations from individuals, businesses, and fundraising events just to provide a safe place for those children who have nowhere else to go. I tell people who ask me about the cost to run the home, I said, well, let's just think about it like this. You have 30 kids in your house. Tell me what you do for those 30 kids in your house when it comes to breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, getting them ready for school, dealing with their um, medical care, and then you'll understand what the kind of cost is that you're talking about. Do you know what that means just to feed them? Let alone have their, have enough diapers for them. The reality is it takes money to run a facility like this. Money that we simply do not have. It's so unfortunate that on weekends, I put 25 children in one building. Can you imagine that with one bathroom? Simply to try to cut down on expenses. Every time Freeport goes through an economic crisis, we have a hurricane, we definitely feel it as well. And so in order to keep these doors open for the next 40 years, we need everybody in the community to come on board and to help these kids. For those who cannot give us funds, come and be a mentor. Come and hug the children. Come spend some time with the children. They love that. We have people that come in and read to them, that give them hugs, that encourage them. There's never any amount of money that is too small, and there's never any amount of service that is too small. This is our computer lab. We were so fortunate that a major corporation and a foundation out of Nassau paid for the, these computers for our children. So we are so grateful for that, and of course, just grateful to persons who have done this for our children. It's really important to remember that these are our children. First of all, they're children. They're children that need to be protected and cared for. Um, and if they don't get that protection and care, we, we know what will happen in the society. We, generally speaking, um, as I said, the outcome isn't good. We have awesome staff, and thank God for volunteers and persons who come and say, I want to help. We're proud about this home and we're proud of how we treat the kids and how successful they can be. We need everybody in the community uh, to come on board and to help these kids. Because as I said, these are our kids. At the Children's Home, we try to give them a happy childhood to combat all the horrendous things that they, no child should see. These are extraordinary children that just want to be loved, that just want to be safe. We have to safeguard them. We have to protect them. We welcome anyone who has the heart for a child. What these children need more than anything else is love and attention. Special thank you to Kenai Media for that extraordinary production. Um, it takes a village, um, and we have one fantastic village here in Grand Bahama. So uh, if anyone would like to find out more, uh, we have Miss Jean Hever, our treasurer, or you can speak to me. I'm also on the board um, because together we can. And I would also like to thank the chamber having the the wherewithal to use this platform to bring awareness and today everybody here is helping because part proceeds of this event are going directly to the children's home so thank you and buy raffle tickets thank you thank you very much leslie and if we were in another place we would be sending the offering baskets around to take advantage of this moment in time that you have been touched. I'm sure we all were. And um, please contact Leslie um, to give a tangible gift towards the continued operation of the Grand Bahama Children's Home. At this time, as we move along with our program, we want to proceed with the award for the company of the year, Award A. And we're going to call Ralph Heburn, and Karen is already here.
And so at this time, they're going to present that award. Ralph Hebern. Yes, he's here. Good afternoon to all. Me and this lovely young lady on the side of me who's making me look good today are here to do the presentation for Class A nominee. The company of the year is awarded to the business which has proven to produce good corporate citizens and improve business while adhering to ethical business practices, is involved and active in industry organizations and is a willing contributor to enhancing the overall development of the Bahamas. Category A nominees are that of the small businesses with one to 50 employees. Being recognized today for their outstanding services to the community are the following companies. We're waiting for it to come up. First on the list, and this is not an alphabetical order or voting order, Switzer Bahamas Limited, <laughs> Flying Fish Restaurant, <laughs> Keen Eye Media Limited, <laughs> Dolphin Cove Restaurant, Bethel Books and Stationers, Bahamas Orthodontic, and Fluid Factory. And now for the fun part, the envelope please, no cheating. <laughs> and today's winner for the small company category is Bethel Books and Stationers. Come on up. Thank you very much. And now we're going to move straight to the Company of the Year, Award B, which are the larger companies. And we're going to call Dan Romance, who is the first vice president of the chamber, and Dylan Knowles, who is a director and runs the Ethics and Legislative Committee. Thank you, Lawrence. Good afternoon, everybody. Company of the Year, Category B, is awarded to the most outstanding business with 51 or more employees. It has proven to produce good corporate citizens and improve business while adhering to ethical business practices. It is involved and active in industry organizations and is a willing contributor to enhancing the overall development of Grand Bahama Island and the Bahamas as a whole. Dylan. And today we have five nominees. And as you've heard already, they are Freeport Ship Services Limited, Pharmachem Technologies GB Limited, the Grand Bahamas Shipyard Limited, Reston Air. and rounding out the group, MSC Bahamas. And the winner is... You beat this already? Reston Air.
we're going to move to the Outstanding Business Person of the Year Award. The Outstanding Business Person of the Year Award, and this will be presented by none other than the Honorable K. Peter Turnquest, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, and Ms. Allison Lavarity will join him on the platform. Good afternoon. The Outstanding Business Person of the Year Award is given to recognize the most outstanding business person selected from the nominees or nominations received. Increase in business income, innovative spirit, new market acquisitions, job creation, and the overall impact on the community are all aspects that make this business person stand out. The business must have at least five years of operations by June of the year. This year's nominees are Leonardo Farisi, Switzer, Bahamas. <laughs> Cleveland Duncombe, Candid Security Limited. <laughs> Lynn Lowe, Kelly's True Value Freeport. Erica Gates, Bahamas Parks, Gardens and Recreation Limited. Larry Albury, Freeport Jet Wash and Auto Parts. Robert Adams, Graham Thompson and Co. And Clavon Duncan, Fluid Factory. Ladies and gentlemen, all of these nominees are well known to us and all have done a fantastic job over the, the years of their operations, and certainly any one of them uh, can be uh, the winner today. Uh, unfortunately or fortunately, there can only be one winner. And that winner for 2016-17 Outstanding Business Person of the Year is Mr. Larry Albury, Freeport Jet Wash and Auto Parts. losing so much weight you can't recognize him anymore. Congratulations again to Larry Albury. Well-deserved award. Well-deserved award. We're going to move right along with our Lifetime Achievement Award. Our Lifetime Achievement Award. And this is going to be presented by Edward Marshall who is the chairman of our Ethics and Legislative Committee on the Chamber Board, and by Mrs. Patra Albury, Director. Give them a round of applause as they make their way. The Lifetime Achievement Award is an honor given to a business person who is recognized for their lifelong growth and contributions to the Grand Bahama Island. The 2017 Lifetime Achievement nominees are Jeff Jeffrey Butler, Frederick R. M. Smith, Queen's Council, and Mr. Ricky Rowe.
Congratulations, the Business Excellent 2017 Lifetime Achievement Award winner is Mr. Frederick R. M. Smith, QC, Calendars and Co. Kerry Leonard will accept on his behalf. He's in court today doing what he likes doing best, and uh, so he really wanted to be here today. And I do know, although he won't be able to say it, after all the work he's done in human rights and everything else, you don't get this kind of recognition every day, and I know he's really going to appreciate what you've done. Thank you. Again, congratulations, and we know that Freeport continues to have a fearless fighter in the person of Fred R. M. Smith. We also, at this time, want to say a special thank you to the Copier Limited for putting the rush and getting the job done in producing our booklet for today, our program booklet. We want to say thank you to the Copia Limited. <laughs> our final award, thank you, Merson. Uh, don't go too far, Merson. Is the President's Award. The President's Award. And it will be presented by the President himself, Mick Holding, and Mrs. Merson Ferguson who is our executive director and administrator. Give them a round of applause. Thank you, Lawrence. The President's Award is given to that individual or that business where it's considered that they have made a significant contribution during the year to the chamber and its activities and to the business community as a whole. This year, I've extended that definition somewhat to recognize a company and its employees who not only met those criteria, but made a significant contribution to the community as a whole. Back in October 2016, following Hurricane Matthew, there was huge devastation across the whole of the island. And many companies worked tirelessly to get us back to normal as quickly as possible. One company in particular worked 24-7, seven days a week, to tidy up the mess and devastation left behind by Hurricane Matthew. Therefore, this year's President's Award goes to, if you haven't already guessed, Sanitation Services. I guess I'll say a few words. Um, anyway, <laughs> can't pass a microphone, yeah. But no, it's I'm merely accepting this award um, on behalf of the people that truly earned it, and that's the employees of Sanitation Services. I know that uh, you see the guys that walk 30 miles a day picking up litter, the garbage collection crew that um, 365 days a year, 24/7. You know they're out there. Um, we have a roll-off crew, we service the hotels, we service uh, the ships, and um, you know, those are the people that really do it, and I want to publicly thank them, congratulate them, and give them the kudos, because they really deserve it. 
and thank Freeport, thank the Chamber. Thank you very much, Lou Carroll, Sanitation Services, an award well deserved, an award well deserved. We're going to call Mercent again at this time. I'll be ready for the raffle drawing. Okay, well, Mercent says we will have the vote of thanks and the acknowledgments first, and Karen Sanchez will take care of that. Thank you very much, Lawrence. So, thank you all for coming, and I hope you liked our new format of the Business Excellence Awards at lunchtime. Yes, was that good? Thank you. President Roll's happy with it. Wonderful. So, I'd like to thank the Deputy Prime Minister for coming and being our honorable patron. Thank you, Peter. I would like to thank Alive, who sponsored our event today. I think all of our winners are very pleased with their prizes, including the, all of the nominees. And I would like to thank all of the Grand Bahama business community. We're all in this together. We're all trying to make it happen, and you guys are proof. We're going to get bigger and better. Kenai Media, thank you for all of your lights, your photography, the video of the Grand Bahama Children's Home. I'd like to thank the Grand Lacayan for hosting us and feeding us. And uh, now I'd like to deviate slightly from the program. Mercent, do not get mad at me. But I'd like to call my partner in crime, Peter, up to the stage with me so he can help present something. Mercer, would you please come up here as well? <laughs> Don't get mad at me. Good. The mic is yours. Okay. So, again, let me say before I do what I'm supposed to do, how incredibly um, humble and honored I am that you would have this uh, Business Excellence Awards under my patronage, or patronage, what is it, patronage? Um, whichever. <laughs> whichever works. It is uh, indeed, uh, I don't know, was I the first person to, yeah. to do this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we came up with this idea, I think it was in 2008, uh, when I was the president of the Chamber of Commerce. Because we recognized at the time that there were many, many business people who were working so hard to try and get the economic uh, engine of Grand Bahama going, there were those who had paved the way uh, for, for the success that we had had up to that point, uh, and we wanted to provide uh, encouragement and inspiration to those up-and-coming business people uh, so that they would, would feel included and feel rewarded and valued. Uh, and so from there to now, seven years uh, of programs later, uh, we are here again to recognize and to honor those business persons who have stuck it out who have shown that they have the commitment, the intestinal fortitude, the creativity uh, to, to make business work in Grand Bahama during very, very difficult and challenging times. Uh, I'm wearing a little pin that says uh, Small Island Recovery and uh, um, Resilience and Recovery, uh, which is a pin that was, uh, I got from the, the World Bank when I was up for meetings a couple of weeks ago. Uh, yes, I was at the World Bank at IMF talking about climate resilience, financial inclusion, and de-risking. De I was not talking about income tax. <laughs> but but the, the whole idea is about how do we make uh, not only our physical environment and in infrastructure resilient, but how do we make our economies resilient in times of crisis. And so uh, uh, I want to congratulate and to, and to pay due respect and honor to the business community of Grand Bahama, who continues to make it happen during very, very difficult times. Uh, certainly, we believe that brighter days are ahead of us, uh, but as in all things, you have to go through it in order to achieve it. And so we are at that, that, that trying time, but success is around the corner, so keep going. My duty today uh, is to do a very simple task, uh, and one that I certainly take a lot of pleasure and delight in, and that is to recognize my friend, uh, someone who has worked so very, very tirelessly and has given so much, sacrificed so much for the business community and for the Chamber of Commerce in particular. You know, we could never pay her enough for the, what she does. The care and attention that she gives uh, to this community, 
and to the business community in particular. Uh, you know, I've been there, and so I know that it is not always easy when you're dealing with people, and you, 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 you know, you're giving your all and people still want more. Uh, and so her stickability, and I know she's threatened to quit more than once, <laughs> her stickability, her creativity in designing programs and supporting the business community, uh, I think is, is, is beyond anything that we can ever give her. And so uh, it is my, my humble pleasure uh, and honor to recognize my friend, my chamber colleague, uh, an icon uh, in the business community here in Grand Bahama, uh, our friend, our executive director, Ms. Merson Ferguson. I believe Merson asked a question earlier. Were there any surprises here today? Were you surprised at anything? <laughs> she will now answer. Wow, that's all I can say. I'm not often lost for words, yeah, true. but I certainly am this afternoon. This is one of the most defining moments I've had at the Chamber of Commerce. The words and the sentiments you express, Mr. Deputy Prime Minister, mean so very much to me. And this gesture on behalf of the Chamber and yourself um, will long be remembered. I feel like I've actually won an award today. You did. So thank you so much. I love the Chamber and I love what I do. And I love serving the business community in my own special way. And therefore, this, this recognition today, um, words fail me to describe how I feel. A simple thank you is certainly not enough. But that's all I can give, so I say thank you to all of you. Thanks. There's not much more to say, I don't think, um, other than to once again uh, thanking you all for coming today and making uh, this seventh uh, Business Excellence Awards ceremony a success, which I, I think you would join me in saying it has been a success. Catch congratulations again to all of the winners and all of the nominees. They were winners as well. Uh, so, uh, as it befalls me, I declare this uh, meeting closed. Thank you very much. <laughs>